I cannot believe the amount of positive feedback I got from the scout video. Thank you guys so much for the support on the video and supporting the channel in general. As promised, here's a combined weapon stats video on the American Ally, also known as the Soldier. For this video and all videos going forward, I'll be using this website to make the custom weapons. It has been a huge help and I am so thankful to GamePro5 for making this all possible for me. Let's get on with the rules. If you want to skip past them, go to this timestamp to continue on with the video. Here's how it works. If a weapon gives plus 20% firing speed and another weapon takes away minus 10 firing speed, then the firing speed overall gives a plus 10% bonus. One thing to note is not all weapons in a weapon slot will be combined. For example, Heavy has two different secondaries. These being launch box items and the shotgun items. Each will be separated into its own category. If all the downsides on a certain weapon reach over minus 100%, meaning it won't do anything, the percent will be sent to minus 99%, but I will be putting the number it would be in parentheses next to the minus 99%. All damage, bullet spread, and clip size positive and negatives will be based off the stock item. I won't be going into detail about bullet spread or crits unless the weapon specifically says anything in regard to those two. If a weapon is of the same weapon slot, even though they look different like Dome Man's Swords and Bottles, I will still be combining them into one because they serve the same function. While weapons like Scout's Pistol and Mad Milk I will be separating because they serve different purposes and do completely different things. And it's way too complicated and I don't want to get into it right now. If you see a stat on a weapon that isn't on that weapon in TF2, that's because I'm using the TF2 wiki as a guide to look at the weapon stats, even the hidden stats. At the end of the video, I'll be putting the weapons in a tier list to see which ones become overpowered and which ones become completely useless. Same with the Scout, the Soldier has one primary weapon slot, three secondary weapon slots, and one melee weapon slot. What is nice about the Soldier is that all of his primary weapons change up how you play him significantly. The stock rocket launcher is a good all around, but the airstrike prioritizes shooting enemies with rocket jumping, the direct hit prioritizes hitting an enemy directly instead of doing burst damage, and the beggar's bazooka relies on splash damage and hitting enemies indirectly to get all the work done for you. But that's only a small fraction of the differences between all his weapons. With all this talk about his rocket launchers, let's jump right into their stats. The base rocket launcher holds 4 rockets in the chamber, with 20 rockets in reserve. The rocket launcher does a base damage of 90 and is affected by damage ramp up and fall off. For those who don't know, fall off and ramp up is damage that does more damage the closer you are to a target and does less damage the further you are away. Most weapons in the game will follow this rule. Rocket launchers are affected by splash damage, which is roughly 147 hammer units. You can also self damage yourself with your rockets, doing anywhere from 27 to 89 damage. Hammer units are TF2's source of distance. All in-game speeds are determined by this, like projectiles and player movement speeds. For example, the scout moves at 400 hammer units a second, while the soldier moves at 240 hammer units a second, which is almost half of the scout's speed. The rocket launcher has an attack speed of 0.8 seconds and a reload speed time of 0.92 seconds for the first rocket and 0.8 seconds for consecutive rockets. Finally, rockets travel at a speed of 1100 hammer units per second, which is over 4.5 times faster than that of Soldier's movement speed. Now, let's move on to this new rocket launcher monstrosity that we are creating. Our first positive is a huge rocket speed boost, increasing his rocket speed by 190% and a 200% increase in his primary ammo. This weapon guarantees mini crits on enemies sent airborne by any means and can restore up to 20 health on hit. Another huge bonus for the Soldier is that the Soldier takes no blast damage from his rockets, and the ammunition is replaced with an ammo meter, meaning that the Soldier never needs to pick up ammo when he is low. Holding left click or mouse 1 will load up to 3 rockets of the chamber before needing to fire the rockets off. The Soldier has an increased attack speed while airborne, and his clip size grows by 1 with each kill, capping out at 8 ammo loaded into the chamber at once. These next 3 stats are all enabled by holding right click or mouse 2 to charge up a shot and release it on your enemies. These charge shots will mini crit players, cause afterburn to enemies for 6 seconds, and can disable buildings for 4 seconds. Wow, what a wonderful weapon, you may be thinking. Never having to reload, faster rocket speed, no self damage, and even mini crits on airborne targets. But oh boy my friend, just like that one guy in high school, I cannot wait to disappoint you. 
This new weapon we have created has a minus 99% splash radius and damage penalty, making it so you can only damage enemies if you hit them directly, and will only do one damage if it does hit. But oh boy, it gets even better. This weapon deals only 20% of your normal damage to buildings, and for all those who've been paying attention, 20% of one damage would make no damage. So the rocket launcher will mini crit whenever it would normally crit, which isn't entirely bad. But having a 3 degree random projectile deviation does sound pretty bad. Overloading the chamber will cause this weapon to misfire, and you cannot collect ammo from dispensers while this weapon is active. Another thing you're unable to do while using this weapon is carry the Idcel and Pastime Jack. For the charge shot, it will use your entire ammo meter when used, and you can't shoot a charge shot unless the ammo meter is full. And finally for the downsides, it wouldn't be a combination if it could not random crit. The only extra stat this weapon would have is that you hold your rocket launcher in the middle of your screen. So I don't really know what to do with this weapon. You only do one damage if you hit an enemy, and that's even if you hit the enemy. You can't rely on splash damage anymore because it's practically non-existent. Even if you're staring directly at the enemy, good luck hitting them with your rockets flying in random directions whenever you shoot them. I guess you could try rocket jumping with this weapon, but oh wait, no you can't, no splash damage. It's about as useless as throwing one speck of gravel at a time at someone, but you have an aim of a three year old. Yeah, you might hit them eventually, but it's not going to do anything except for annoy them. Let's just move on to the secondaries before I have a stroke thinking about all of this. But first, if you're enjoying the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It means a lot to me and helps out the channel a lot. Now on to the secondaries. Now, I know at the beginning of the video I said the soldier had three different types of secondaries, but there are actually four, because for the love of everything holy, there is no way I'm throwing in the righteous bison with the shotguns. It's different and we're leaving it at that, okay? It gets its own weapon category, heck, it gets its own tier. <sighs> okay, I'm calmed down now, let's move on. Up first we have the shotgun. The shotgun shoots 10 pellets at once, with each pellet doing 6 damage. He's able to fire off shots every 0.625 seconds and reloads every second for the first shotgun shell, but then half a second for the remaining shells. He's able to have 6 ammo loaded at once and can hold up to 32 rounds in reserve. An all around, well balanced weapon. Let's have some fun by ruining that balance. There are only 2 shotguns soldier can use besides stock, which is the panic attack and the reserve shooter. Combining these weapons gives us a weapon that gives a 70% faster weapon deploy time and 15% faster switch from speed. Basically you switch the weapon 70% faster and you switch off the weapon 15% faster. You can mini crit enemies that were knocked airborne, shoot 50% more pellets per shot, and shoot them in a fixed pattern. Before we move on, I want to explain what these words mean real quick. Most weapons in the game shoot their burst shots in a random pattern. For the panic attack however, these shots will always stay in the exact same pattern no matter how you shoot them. Back to the combined shotgun, we have its downsides. Those being a 34% smaller clip size, 20% damage penalty, and that successive shots become less accurate. The only extra stat that comes into play is that mini crits only take effect within 5 seconds of deploying this weapon. Overall, it's just a slightly altered panic attack. Nothing crazy insane, but this is an actually usable weapon, which is nice to see in this series for once. Next we have the banners. Now all the banners are not really weapons, but more so passive items you hold until you do a certain amount of damage, which then you can left click to activate something called a rage meter. Spoiler warning, this is going to be really overpowered. Also, since you wear the base jumper on your back as well, I'm adding it alongside with the banners. While this ultimate backpack is active, you get 10 seconds of <sighs> Guarantee mini crits, immunity to crits, raises resistance damage to 35%, raises sentry resistance to 50%, have increased movement speed, are healed 35% of the damage due to enemies, and all of these are for your whole team, not just yourself. On top of all of that, you passively have an increased health pool and gain a health regen ability. You need to do only 560 damage to enemy players, and then this ability is all yours to use at the expense of others. Oh, also while in midair, you can press spacebar to open a parachute to slow your descent and take no fall damage whatsoever. If you have a well coordinated team, and you activate this, you will absolutely shred through your enemies like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, this weapon is pretty good. Now to kill off all the hype from the backpacks, we have the boots which consist of the gunboats and the mantreads. There's not a lot to cover here, so let's get on with it. 
The boots provide 60% less stealth damage from rocket jumping, a 75% reduction in push force from your enemies, a 75% reduction in air blast vulnerability, a 200% increase in air control, and you do 3 times the amount of fall damage you took when you land on an enemy. So basically, if you fall on someone's head and take 20 hit points of fall damage, you'll deal 60 damage to them. Also, the boots specify that they don't affect fall damage and their abilities are passive, which would be weird to think if they weren't passive because you're literally wearing the boots, but I digress. Finally, onto the melees. Only 8 of Soldier's melee weapons change something about the stock shovel besides just the kill icon, so let's get on with it. Starting off with the positives, when active, damage and speed increases as the user takes damage. When at full health, you do 3 to 3 damage and move at 240 hammer units per second. And when you're at 1 health, you deal 107 damage and move at 384 hammer units per second. This weapon increases the capture rate by 1 and has a 120% increase in range. On kill, you heal 50% of the user's base health. On hit, you boost yourself and your allies and you deal crits while rocket jumping. Now for the downsides. While active, you gain 99% less healing from medic sources and take mini crits whenever this weapon is active. This user has an increased bullet vulnerability by 10 and a 75% slower deploy and holster time. You are unable to sheath your weapon before you kill an enemy or you'll take 50 damage. This weapon has a 25% decrease in damage, a 20% slower firing speed debuff, and this weapon will not random crit. This weapon only comes with two extra stats. Those being that players killed with this weapon turn to golden statues, and that if you attack a player wielding the halves of Toichi, it will one-shot them. Also, you can top kill people, which is always fun. I don't know how to feel about this weapon, to be honest. The damage ramp up is holding me back a lot, especially with that 25% damage penalty, meaning you'd be doing roughly 25 damage on full health and only 80 damage on low health, which is only 15 hit points more than stock. Bullet vulnerability and a slower firing speed, too. I just don't know about this weapon, guys. Well, now is that time in the video where I get right all these weapons to see which I find really good and which get picked last for dodgeball. Starting with the rocket launcher, I have to put it in F tier. I tried so hard to make this weapon seem somewhat viable. I thought about rocket jumping, I thought about walking up to enemies and shooting them point big, even using the overload mechanic to fly around the map and capture a point just a little bit faster. None of it would work. All the rocket jumping doesn't work because of barely any splash damage, and even attacking an enemy at point blank range with 3 rockets loaded would just do 3 damage. I'm sorry, but it looks like this weapon is going to have to be our first F tier weapon. The shotgun I'm placing in B. It is not a bad weapon at all, and overall I think it's just a good weapon in general. There is no contest, the backpacks are going to be an S tier. There is just too much utility with these weapons and too much opportunities these weapons allow for. Overall, it's just an overpowered and busted item. The boots I'm putting in C tier. They have a real niche use, which isn't bad, but it's uncommon to kill someone only by landing on their heads. What's keeping this weapon from being lower on the list is that the less self damage and vulnerabilities you get while this weapon is equipped. Finally, the shovel is going into D tier. The only thing keeping it from being in F tier is that you can use it to run away faster if you're low and need to get out of wherever you are in a pinch. It can also help enemies get to the front lines faster, but forget about even trying to attack with this thing. As soon as you pull it out, you're marked for death, and you don't even do a crazy ton of damage. Also, like I said before, taunt killing is fun. And that's it! Thank you guys so much for all the positive feedback on my last video over this topic. These are always so fun to make, and I hope you all enjoyed this one as well. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe. It's free, and helps the channel grow a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.